Hey Stampers! Today I'm going to share with you a super simple fancy fold card. I believe it's called a decorative box card. Um, and when it stands up, you can see that from the top. And this is what it looks like from the front. Uh, and then, so there's four panels and one of the panels is for your message. And then it folds flat and you can fit it into a standard size envelope and it's good for mailing. Okay, so let's get started. You won't believe how simple this is. Um, first of all, the product that I'm using for this particular sample is from this collection, which is in the 2016 uh, occasion, Stampin' Up! Occasions catalog. So I used the A Nice Cuppa for the stamped images, so the tea bag, the teacup, and the You Are Terrific. The patterned paper is from the Have a Cuppa Designer Series Paper Stack. And then the little embellishment is from the Have a Cuppa embellishments. And then the Wisteria Wonder. I love that Stampin' Up! has started coming out with coordinating cardstock packs that goes with the, that go with their um, paper stacks. And even the, just the regular paper packs as well, which is great. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start with a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock. So we're starting with half of a sheet and you're going to score it at two and one eighth, four and a quarter, and six and three eighths. Now if you're not good with math, um, an easy way to remember that is you want to fold it in half and then fold each of those halves in half. Or score, them, score it in half and then score each of those halves in half. And that's a good rule of thumb if you're adjusting the sizes. Um, I'll show you a couple alternate sizes that I created um, a little bit later. All right, so you want to start with that and then you are going to decorate your panels. And I find it easier to decorate while it's flat. So here is a piece of scored Bermuda Bay and I've added four mats. So one of them I left without the patterned paper so that that could be my um, my, where I can add my little notes and my greeting. Uh, so your mats will be one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. So that's the white piece and you want four of those. And then your patterned paper will be one and five eighths by five. So you can get three of those from the six, one six by six piece and still end up with a couple scraps. I like to use the scraps to decorate the envelopes. So one of the scrap pieces I put, this was across the bottom, I put across the bottom of my envelope. So that's a great way to get them all matching. All right, and then what you need is you need a piece of coordinating cardstock. So whatever color your card base is, you want a piece that measures one inch by five and a half inches and you're going to score it at the half inch mark, so down the middle. And I forgot to grab my fast fuse, so let me just grab that. Okay, so as far as adhesive goes, um, for this particular part, I prefer to use fast fuse, or you can also use tear tape as well. You want something that is really quite sticky because you don't want your card to fall apart. So I'm going to put a strip fast fuse down here and stick this, lining this up with the score line in the center. adhesive. Actually, before I do that, let's fold along these score lines. So it folds a little bit easier. Okay, so now I'll put another strip of fast fuse down here. And then I'm just going to fold it in and fold this down. And there is your box. Was not that not easy? So, so easy. So that is your base. And then what you want to do to add your focal point, I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here that I've scored. I didn't even score it down the middle. It doesn't matter where it's scored, just as long as there's a score line. Because then what you're going to do is you're going to take a circle punch, and it doesn't matter how big it is. Um, depending on the size of your focal point, you can use a larger one. So I could have used a larger one on this, but this is the first punch that I grabbed. So I'm going to punch that so that the score line is down the center. Hopefully you can see that. And I want two of those circles. And 
and then you want to fold them in half. Let's put that out of the way. And you're going to put a little bit of adhesive on one half. And you're going to take your card and the side with adhesive. You're going to put down, depending on where you want your focal point, I don't want it in the center, I want it a little higher. So I'm just going to stick that down like that and do the same with this. And I'll show you a little bit closer what I've done. So I'm lining this up on the other side. And you can see that I'm not lining it up right with the score line. There is a little bit of a space in between there. Okay. And then what you'll do is you'll add dimensionals on here and then put your focal point on top. Okay, so just a reminder of what it looks like. There's the focal point for this card, particular card. So let's see if you can see here. So if I pull that out, hopefully you can see that. You can see that there's dimensionals in there. So I've added a dimensional to each. Actually, it's probably with a three quarter inch circle, it's probably half a dimensional on either side. And then I just slap my focal point on top. Okay, so that's how quickly and easily those cards are to make. Here's another one I created, exactly the same focal point, just with different patterned paper from that same have a cuppa paper stack. And then here I did the Wisteria Wonder on the background, on the back, with a little embellishment. These embellishments are so cute. Okay, now I've got a couple others to share with you in different sizes. Let's move some of this stuff out of the way here. This particular one, I love this one. This uses the Going Places bundle that's in the 2016 Occasions catalog. Um, it uses the patterned paper, so it's a little bit smaller. Our, um, the panels measure three inches by four inches. So I started with a four by 12 inch strip and then, and then scored it at three, six, and nine to give me the panels. So and then there's the greeting block and the embellishments. These are our little wood words. I can't remember what they're called. I'll put it in the notes below the video. Uh, but what I did was I used our gold wink of Stella and just colored on them. I don't know if you can see in the video, but it just shimmers. It's beautiful. Um, so thanks, I'm lost with you. And it's nice because it will fold flat. And it is a little bit bigger than this size, so I did have to make an envelope for it. but with the envelope punch board that comes in handy. So I made a coordinating envelope stamped on it and then this will fit nicely inside. So the folded down side actually measures four by six inches. Okay, and then this was one, this is one that I made for my mom for her birthday. So it stands up, it measures four by six. And I used some of the embellishments from the, I think it's Memories in the Making Project Life Accessory Pack. Um, so this and the ice cream cone and this banner are all from that. I embossed this using the butterfly embossing folder. This is our gorgeous glitter tape that we had as one of our celebration options. Um, added some punched butterflies. And then back here, this is going to be for a photo. I'm going to put a photo of the kids in there. Again, more embellishments from the Memories in the, or Memories in the Making kit. And then this is the greeting panel. Hopefully you can see that. And that stands up like that. And that's what it looks like from the front. So it's a little bit larger, uh, but I really wanted to include a photo. So I wanted something a little bit bigger. And then of course with the um, envelope punch board, you can make an envelope to match or to fit. So this actually measures, what is it? This is eight inches by six inches and it will do envelopes up, up to that size, so, which is perfect. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking for more inspiration, feel free to visit uh, my blog at www.stamptreasures.com. Thanks for watching.